All of the music for today's Mass can be found in your online worship aid. Please join in singing the gathering song, Hosea. second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths during all the time it lies waste 
it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of the people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Back in the early days of the church, one job that early Christian preachers had was to explain to prospective Jewish converts how the Old Testament pointed to Jesus. One way they did this was to show us how key Old Testament persons and events pointed to key New Testament persons and events. For example, they showed how Abraham's son Isaac pointed to Jesus. Isaac was an only son, as Jesus was. Isaac was deeply loved, as Jesus was. Isaac was given for sacrifice, as Jesus was. Isaac was to be offered on a hill, as Jesus was. Isaac carried the sacrifice wood, as Jesus did. St. Paul makes similar comparisons between the Old Testament and the New Testament. For example, in his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul compares Adam and Jesus. He writes, The first man, Adam, was created a living being, but the last Adam, Jesus, is life-giving spirit. The first Adam, made of earth, came from the earth. The second Adam, Jesus, came from heaven. Those who belong to the earth are like the one who was made of earth. Those who are of heaven are like the one who came from heaven. Just as we wear the likeness of the man of earth, so we will wear the likeness of the man from heaven. Today's Gospel, Jesus draws yet another parallel between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He says to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Old Testament event Jesus has in mind is the one described in the book of Numbers. It's where the Israelites are complaining bitterly to God and Moses about the troubles that they're having in the desert. Following their complaint, snakes appear and attack the people, and many die. When this happens, the people cry out to Moses, 
We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Now pray to the Lord to take these snakes away. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told Moses to make a metal snake and put it on a pole so that anyone who was bitten could look at it and be healed. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who had been bitten would look at the bronze snake and be healed. Now, the medical profession chose the image of the snake coiled above the pole as the symbol for its healing profession. Think about it. Now, Jesus parallels this Old Testament event to his crucifixion on Calvary. He explains that whoever looks upon him with faith will be healed spiritually, just as the Israelites were healed when they looked upon the coiled snake. Now John follows the reference to Jesus' crucifixion with these words in verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. And then in verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. These two verses in the third chapter of John's Gospel have been called a summary of the Bible. Now, a more modern example. Back in the 1970s, these two verses, John 3.16 and John 3.17, took on extra special meaning for many Bible readers. It involved our astronaut program for the Apollo mission. Space engineers at the time were designing spacesuits for the command module pilot and the lunar module pilot. A part of the design of each spacesuit was an umbilical cord consisting of a long, flexible tubing. And the purpose of the umbilical cord was to supply oxygen to the astronauts when they walked in space from, or passed from one module to another. The suit receptacle into which the command pilot's cord fit was called J316. The suit receptacle into which the lunar pilot's cord fit was called J317. Now the designer, Frank Denton, named these two suit receptacles after the two gospel passages, John 3.16 and John 3.17. And he said his reasoning for doing this was this. Just as J316 and J317 supply the astronauts with what they need to survive in their journey from one module to another, so John 316 and John 317 supply us with what we need to survive our journey from Earth to Heaven. And so today's Gospel is a rich one. First, it contains a beautiful summary of the Bible. Second, it contains a beautiful illustration of how the Old Testament and the New Testament fit together. Finally, it illustrates how Jesus is our lifeline as we pass from earth to heaven, just as the umbilical cord is the astronaut's lifeline as they pass from one space capsule to another. In other words, just as the umbilical cord supplies the astronauts with life-giving oxygen, so Jesus supplies us with life-giving grace. So let me close 
by recalling these words of St. Paul in today's second reading. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God. And may God bless us all with the openness to accepting this grace. And together as his faith community, we profess the faith that we believe in. I believe, I believe in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and of Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And at this time, we present our prayers and petitions to the Father. That the Church be healed of all division and grow in unity, charity, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, that they may strive to walk in the light and lead us to a more just, more peaceful, and more equitable future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of our prayers, for those who are homebound or suffering from chronic illness, for those impaired by addiction, for all who are close to death, and for those who suffer alone, and for their caregivers, that they be sustained in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that in our unified efforts to support the Catholic Appeal, our parish programs and ministries will be enriched here at Ave Maria Parish, as together we move forward in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith reflect clearly the light of Jesus Christ in its prayer and outreach. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of John J. O'Leary, Frank Iggy, Dora Siriello, Cir John and Mary Serino, and Santa and Vincenzo D'Amico, for whom this Mass is offered. For all our beloved dead and for our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, we ask you to hear and accept these prayers and petitions we offer you this day. Continue to strengthen us in your love that we may strive to be this people you call us to be. And we ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Son is wondrous resurrection. 
resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Maria Goretti, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some announcements as we conclude Mass today. Easter flower envelopes are available at the doors of our churches. You can make a donation in memory of a loved one or just give a donation to defray the cost of the Easter flowers that will decorate our church. Faith formation registration for next year, 2024-2025, is open until April the 7th. Please contact Jamie Bossy or Robin Yanoni for more information. And please join us on Monday, March 11th, this coming Monday at 6.30 p.m. at OLA Church for a Lenten prayer service of light and shadows in the style of Tenebrae. The service features scripture readings, prayers, reflections, and music. So please join us this coming Monday. With thanks to Father Rich Putnam for celebrating our Mass today, I wish all of you a joyful, peaceful week ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, please join in singing Amazing Grace. <laughs>